A storm is coming in Dove Valley, according to Broncos players. That is one of the mantras heading into this upcoming season. There's some excitement and some juice inside Dove Valley, according to Justin Simmons and Cortland Sutton after Nathaniel Hackett has held his first team meeting. Plus, there were some forgotten players on the offensive side of the ball in the Broncos' current 90-man roster that nobody is talking about. And we even look at skill players, offensive linemen. You get that and much more on today's brand-new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke. I'm joined alongside every day by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn notifications, smash that like button for the algorithm. Make sure you comment, share your thoughts down below or whether you listen to us on your favorite audio podcasting platform thank you so much Broncos country sir a storm is coming and apparently that is the new mantra inside the building in Dove Valley for this Denver Broncos football team as they begin the OTA portion they started they reported on Monday but players been working there's been some throw sessions outside of the weight you know lifting grind that we all obviously partake in ourselves here man so just there's some new energy right now in Broncos country I'm stoked about it I love it, Cody. I absolutely love it. I'll take every bit of content the Denver Broncos want to put out right now. I don't care if it's the bench press. I don't care if it's Josie Jewell doing the little back flies. I don't care. I want to see everything that's going on in that facility right now, including that massive mural. For those of you that haven't seen it, you've got to go watch some of these videos. There's just a huge mural in that training facility, the indoor training facility, that says a storm is coming. And I can't imagine if you're a player for the team, how cool that would be to walk into practice, to walk into the gym uh, and, and work out with that right above you. Just thinking like, man, like it's it's all about anticipation. It's all about subliminal messaging. It's all about if you're a player for that team or if you're part of the organization in any way, shape or form, you are part of the storm. You're the storm that's coming and you, and you want others to not be ready for that storm like people aren't a lot of times. Like I wasn't last night here in Nebraska, Cody. Big time storm <laughs> coming. It was like 91 degrees yesterday and it's 30 degrees today. So that, you know, that was very interesting. But it's all very exciting stuff happening in Broncos country. A storm is coming, baby, and you love to see it. I can't remember what the other mantras have been since 2015. I remember 2015, clear as day. Iron sharpens iron, sharpens iron was iron. hung up as the mural for the team. I don't know if there were any other like mantras in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I can't remember yeah. off the top of my head, but maybe they're getting yeah. into something new here with Nathaniel Hack, and I love it. A perfect storm. That mm-hmm. could be something we see here in 2022. But now with everybody reporting back, it you now see it. And you see in the way the Broncos were pretty. You see, like even like the social team, it's like the expectations now in Denver are massively much higher with Russell Wilson being inside the building. And you know, for a guy like Cortland Sutton who met with the media early on in the week, he talked about, you know, hey, there's I've heard and I've seen people have told me how it was when Peyton Manning was in the building. It's kind of the same thing now that we're seeing with Russell Wilson, the way that he prepares. I mean, even for Sutton, like you couldn't help but hear the excitement that he had about being able to get back to work. And look, none of this is mandatory. Like this is all voluntary and they are there because they think it's important to build the foundation. I'm loving it. This is the Russell Wilson effect that we are seeing right now. Well, and I know that Russell Wilson isn't technically like their new boss or anything, Cody, but they do have a new boss, Nathaniel Hackett and his staff. And and just in, in terms of like a new work environment, if you were previously employed at a new place or at a place, let's say anywhere, wherever you might be employed and you hire somebody that's now above you. And also you hire somebody for your department that's brand new, but highly, highly respected. Let's say you bring in one of the best at their, at their job in the entire country or whatever. You wouldn't you want to be around those people to try to make a great impression? Wouldn't you want to be around those people to try to gain chemistry right away or to try to get kind of on their good side? I feel like there's a lot of that going on with, like you mentioned, these high expectations. You don't want to let your new coach down. You don't want to let your new quarterback down, especially somebody that's probably already punched his ticket to Canton, Ohio, after his playing days are done, like Russell Wilson. A living legend comes into the building. You want to be there for that. You don't want to miss out on that just because of, well, you know, 
uh, it's voluntary. So I'm not gonna I'm gonna do my own workouts. I'm gonna do my own lifting and conditioning. Now, nah, man, you want to get around Russell. You want to get around Hackett. You want to be around the team. And it sounds like Hackett is doing a really great job of establishing that. Hey, this is not just a uh, an organization. This is a, a team that we're gonna build a family like atmosphere. And that's something that Justin Simmons really touched on as well. Talked about like, you know, hey, walking into the building, first thing they hear from him is, hey, what's up? You know, how are you doing? What'd you do last night? Rather than, you know, getting into it and say, okay, now we're going to go over cover four. We're going to look at this. Like it is a personal feel to it, which look, I feel like has been something like players I've spoken to. Look, with Vic Fangio is very business oriented. There was a part about the coaching staff that did inquire about, you know, hey, how you doing? There were a lot of coaches on the staff that did buy into that. Like, hey, you know, how you doing? Is everything good? How's the wife? How's the kids? But for the most part, it was more so business. Like when you walk in the building, it's business. And there's a time to flip a switch. Don't get me wrong. When you walk into a building, you walk into work, you always have to flip a switch, but it doesn't always have to be serious all the time. Like you can have this personable, humanized connection, which is so important. And now all of a sudden these players, they have a coaching staff that they really feel like care about them genuinely and are caring to get to know them. Like there's a lot of team building activities that the Broncos, the coaches and the players are all doing together right now. You got to love stuff like that because it does build camaraderie, build character. And one thing that Justin Simmons mentioned too, like, Hey, you know, just because Russell Wilson is here, look, that's going to be great for our offense, but that doesn't mean that we can take a break on the defensive side of the ball. We must continue to strive to be a top defense in the league. And it doesn't matter if Russell Wilson came in and all of a sudden the Broncos have a top offense. We have to match that intensity, which I think is a great mentality to have here. It really is, you know, and he said in his press conference, you know, he's kind of taken that mentality from the from the beginning. Like he doesn't like to use the excuse about the quarterback position. He talked about the fact they went into every game last year believing that they could win. So I think that that's a great mentality to just keep, you know, you, it's going to come down to the defense one way or another. That's Justin Simmons mindset. And I think as the leader of the defense, it's a great mindset for them to have because just because now you have a quarterback, that doesn't mean you can go out there and take a play off or take a drive off. And I love the atmosphere that's being built and the culture that's being built. Like Justin Simmons said he noticed it right away and, and he made sure to clarify like it wasn't the exact opposite with the previous staff or anything because you're right. There were other coaches that did do that kind of stuff. But when you're talking about coaches coming in and establishing and building culture, I think this principle applies in any arena of, of employment, whether you're on a football team or in just the general working force, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You can't really go into an environment and say, well, I was Aaron Rodgers coach for his last two MVP seasons, and we hired a Giro Evero who just won a Super Bowl with the Los Angeles Rams. These guys have the credentials, but it's way more about building relationships and establishing a great foundation of trust between one another because at the end of the day if you don't trust each other as a football team or if you're not if you're not a tight knit group like that 2015 team was it's not going to work out for you. Spot on. And we've seen how that's gone for the Broncos the last several years. There's been some elements on the football field and some aspects between coaches, players, where there wasn't trust. And I think that is a huge issue that has impeded the progress of Denver. But hopefully that now changes with Nathaniel Hackett, Russell Wilson, and obviously leaders like Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson on the defensive end. A lot of optimism and energy here for Broncos country. But coming up here in just a moment, Sarah and I, we're going to talk about some offensive players, some skill players that maybe have been forgotten by fans and by some of us in the media world we talk about who those players are and maybe why to keep an eye on them coming into this offseason coming up here in just a moment but before we do that let me tell you about betonline.net the sponsor of today's episode locked on broncos and betonline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information this upcoming season find all the latest sports developments league reviews and news including this year's basketball playoffs this weekend and the start of the major league baseball season betonline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. BetOnline.net. BetOnline, where the game starts. And Broncos country, as we get ready to get into the second half action of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, talking about some of the forgotten offensive skill players that are on this team. Just a reminder, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. If you're not making us your first listen of the day, we encourage you to do so. When you wake up in the morning and you get ready to go to the gym to work out, you have your cup of coffee or breakfast, turn on the Lockdown Broncos podcast, whether you do it on YouTube, whether you do it on your favorite audio podcasting platform, listen to us to stay up to date with what's going on around Dove Valley with an objective point of view on all things Denver Broncos. Sarah, my friend, you know, I... I saw something on social media the other day, and look, I think that for fans and for media, 
sometimes we can forget about some players. And I had saw something that the Broncos were doing in the community. They were obviously feeding you know some people, and it was a community effort, one of the community relations things and the projects the Broncos had working on there. And I saw somebody, and I was like, I didn't know he was still on the roster, and that was on me. And that's Tyree Cleveland. Like I saw Tyree Cleveland. I said, I had no idea he was still there because – Last time I had checked and last thing I recall is he was waived a couple times throughout last season and I wasn't quite sure if he was back, but that confirmed that he was back and that was something I missed along the way, which, you know, hey, I'm human, it happens, but it goes to show like, hey, let's talk about some of the forgotten players that maybe fans and all some of us media don't remember are actually on this roster right now and we'll have a chance to make this roster going into the summer. Tyree Cleveland, here's the thing I want to start off with him and I know you have some players as well we'll talk about from a skill player standpoint. Tyree Cleveland, I remember a lot of the hype to in training camp just a couple years ago he, he's got a tim patrick body type like some people were saying hey he could be tim patrick's eventual replacement here for the denver broncos and obviously for cleveland coming out of florida there was an aspect to him where hey you know he could become a reliable target like when you need a big play tyree cleveland could be the guy for you considering where he was at with a loaded wide receiver room when he played at florida and even in the kick return game we saw him step up on special teams i think for him right now when we look at corlin sutton tim patrick jerry judy kj hamler Kendall Hinton there. There's five guys that we know that played a lot last season for the team. Tyree Cleveland was kind of one of those guys that kind of got buried underneath a lot of that. You know, we saw Kendall Hinton step up in a facet, and Tyree Cleveland kind of took a step back there when he was one of the players I had actually projected to be a breakout year last season. So, hey, maybe it can still happen here in 2022. But, man, Tyree Cleveland was a forgotten Bronco here going into the offseason. That's on me, man. But, hey, I'm excited to see what it is. Is there anybody else? On this offensive side of the ball, Sarah, in your opinion, that may maybe people aren't paying enough attention to or may have forgotten about in some of these conversations. Well, I like the pick of Tyree Cleveland because now the wide receiver position, I think everybody kind of gets leveled up, so to speak, with Russell Wilson at the quarterback position. If you get out on the field with Russell at the QB spot, I feel like your opportunities are, are going to be much better. And I, that's what makes me think of Seth Williams. You know, we've been talking so much about the other wide receivers, obviously Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick getting the extensions, Jerry Judy. Can he have a kind of a breakout year now, so to speak, with Russell as the quarterback and him being a much more heavily targeted uh, playmaker for the offense? K.J. Hamler coming back from the injury. We've given so much attention to these other guys. Even Kendall Hinton, like you mentioned, who was out at those workouts in California, but Seth Williams is another guy to me that I feel, Cody, like I just really liked his game at Auburn. And I feel like the highs were extremely high. And yes, the lows were low enough that he dropped to the sixth round of the 2021 NFL draft. But he was a player that I think the Broncos, they got him up onto the active roster just at the right time last year to prevent a situation for where, he, yeah, he could leave for another team. He could go sign a reserve contract elsewhere. But the Broncos brought him up and brought him back. I really like his potential with Russell Wilson, just for the same reasons you mentioned with Tyree Cleveland, the big play opportunities downfield, the excellent size. He was another guy that I thought, well, if Tim Patrick doesn't get re-signed, maybe he's that replacement. Well, now maybe he's just an auxiliary weapon for your offense that can give you an additional red zone guy, an additional chain mover, somebody that could provide a 40-yard play every other game or something like that. I, I like Seth Williams' potential, and I think it's easy to forget about him given the depth at wide receiver. Well, you know, if the term, let Russ cook, like if Russ is the chef and he's going to be cooking up, okay, Tim Patrick's the salt, Jerry Judy's the pepper, you know, who's got the paprika, the garlic, the onion powder, like all that stuff. Like we could come up with some really unique things here, Lockdown Broncos. But anyways, outside of that, we'll continue on here. But what about Sean Byer at the tight end position? I know we've been very acclimated on Albert Okuebunam and obviously the addition of Eric Tomlinson. We were excited about the prospect of Kyle Rudolph visiting the Broncos last week. And we talked about that on Monday's episode of Lockdown Broncos. But a bigger question here, for Sean Byer, he was also a guy that made the roster in a sense going into last season practice squad, and he has some athletic potential to him. I know, look, he's coming from Iowa. I know you're a big Iowa Hawkeye guy. There's some playmakers there, and not to mention he's a good blocker, but he's also an athletic playmaker that could have some opportunities maybe in the preseason to really elevate his name a little bit for Broncos country. He is, and and depending on what you consider Andrew Beck, if if you say he's well, he's more of a fullback than a tight end. Really, Sean Byer right now is one of only three tight ends on the roster. So maybe that speaks to the Broncos' confidence in him. Maybe that speaks to the fact that they're going to go heavy on tight end in and during and after the draft. But we'll see. We'll see kind of what happens. I know he was one of the guys they really prioritized as an undrafted free agent last year. And typically when that kind of a thing is happening, that's coming from the scouting department. And those guys are all still around. 
it wasn't it I, I don't know that necessarily it was Wade Harmon last year that was campaigning for the Broncos to go get Sean Byer and maybe that is the case in which case he's got an opportunity now to really impress the new staff but I think he's a good scheme fit Cody I feel like coming from Iowa you have to do a lot of those inline blocking type of things in order to play for Kirk Ferentz but also he showed some tremendous potential as a receiver while with the Hawkeyes so I think it's easy to forget about him in the conversation but he does have some potential to contribute. What about the offensive line and maybe quarterback? Are there forgotten players that maybe Broncos country and the media aren't paying attention to? Well, Sarah Benninger and myself, we're going to bring that up coming up here in just a moment. But let me tell you about Shady Rays, another sponsor of today's episode, Locked On Broncos. And Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed, durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something you won't find anywhere else is Shady Rays insane protection program shady rays includes lost and broken protection on every single pair and they will send you a brand new pair if you lose them no matter what happened give them a try and if you don't like them or love them you'll pay nothing it's as simple as that plus 10 mils are donated to fight hunger in america when you shop with shady rays exclusively for our listeners of lockdown broncos you can head to shadyrays.com and use promo code locked on this one word locked on to get 50 percent off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code locked on for their best deal of the season. 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Ray sunglasses backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Locked On Broncos, talk about some of the forgotten offensive players that maybe nobody is talking enough about going into the offseason. We talk about elevated roles here. Well, hey, let's start things off here on the offensive line. Now, I think everyone's focused, okay? For the most part, I think we can project, Sarah, maybe what the starting O-line will be right now. Garrett Bowles at left tackle, Dalton Reisner at left guard. Center might be a little bit of a question. You got Cushionberry and potentially Graham Glasgow, who could be competing for that spot here this upcoming training camp. But then at right guard, I think the Broncos are really set here on Quinn Miners. And then at right tackle, well, there's a three-way competition between Tom Compton, Billy Turner, and Calvin Anderson. And look, it's good options to have here. But, I mean, the Broncos also made a move that is very familiar to Nathaniel Hackett and Justin out in this offseason, and he's kind of not been talked about enough. Right. Ben Braden, one of those underrated free agent signings, just like I'm sure we'll talk about some guys on the defensive side that really don't get a lot of fanfare in terms of the players that the Broncos have brought in over the course of this offseason. Ben Braden may be the least talked about offensive free agent the Broncos have brought in, but that's, of course, because, you know, price matters in this. And then the Broncos have also signed uh, three other guys, the guys that you just mentioned, Compton, Anderson and Billy Turner. So, you know, Ben Braden is kind of a flexible guard tackle. I remember last year, Cody, right before roster cuts, I was looking at potential guys that the Broncos could potentially maybe look to trade for just in case that there was an opportunity that arose. And Ben Braden was one of those guys that he, he put some good stuff out there on tape for the Packers in preseason play. So it'll be interesting to see what he plays for the Broncos, whether guard or tackle or both. And like you said, he has the coaching connection. So I think it's a good fit for the roster for him to just be there, at least for the 90-man uh, going into the to the offseason. Well, Brett Rippon just recently signed his tender for the Broncos. He is back here in 2022. Is there going to be a competition at backup quarterback between Brett Rippon and guess who? Josh Johnson. Like, you know, for a guy like Josh Johnson, I think what is most interesting about him is he's been a player, obviously, going all the way back to the Eddie Royal days for the Denver Broncos has been in the National Football League, like going all the way back to the 08s, 09s. Like he's worked with a variety of different coaches. But then there's been a couple stints where he's taken some years off from the NFL, hasn't been on an NFL team. And then he came back more recently last year, had a stint with the Baltimore Ravens, the New York Jets, and played pretty well, Sarah, for the most part. Like didn't make really any critical mistakes that impacted the outcome of the game. And he actually gave, you know, those teams and those offenses a little bit of a chance, all circumstances considered. What do you talk about the New York Jets there? Um, you know, for the Baltimore Ravens, they also had other playmakers around them, and they also had a pretty stout defense for the most part before everybody got injured. You know, for Josh Johnson, you know, what type of move could this be for the Broncos, especially behind a guy like Russell Wilson? You know, I think that skill set, offensive scheme, is it going to be between Brett Rippon and Josh Johnson? I think it. I think it is. You know, and that'll be fun to watch. What I think the best thing that Josh Johnson brings to the table to me is is his wealth of experience in a multitude of offenses and with so many different coaches that he's worked with and played for. Like you go back, like you said, all the way back to 2008 when he came into the league, he was drafted by John Gruden's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So 
he has experience with some of the best coaches in league history, offensively speaking. And then even in college, you know, at San Diego, remember Jim Harbaugh was the head coach at San Diego back in the day before he became the head coach at Stanford. Josh Johnson played for Jim Harbaugh all the way back in college. And then he, like you said, last year, he played for Jim's brother, John, with the Baltimore Ravens. And you can go through the years. I mean, the coaching connections and the the guys that this guy has worked with, it's a pretty remarkable list. So I think having that experience under his belt really helps bring a great voice to the quarterback room and, and how much he sees things differently compared to Russell Wilson. Like, sure, Josh Johnson may not be out there. He's not going to throw for 3,000 yards this season, at least God willing. We hope Russell Wilson stays healthy. But, man, he in the, in the meeting rooms and in the film room, he's going to bring such a unique perspective. I think that gets underrated in terms of what he's been brought in to do, which is really fortify that whole room. Well, I mean, I look at the Broncos. You look between Russell Wilson, between Josh Johnson, and Brett Rippon, who people have raved about like with his football IQ and where he's at. Like They say, hey, he could become a potential coach. A lot of people have called him like the next Gary Kubiak in a sense. So that's very exciting to maybe see about Rippon. But like the IQ of that room is going to be very high. And it's going to be great for when any when Russ is coming off the field. These guys, they're going to be on the clipboard. They're going to be seeing what's happening. They're going to see the iPad. And they're going to say, hey, you know, they're doing this. Like They're going to be another voice for Russell Wilson. And it's going to be collaborative, I imagine. But let's talk about an offensive tackle too you know one that got a pretty big payday last year's an undrafted rookie free agent for this Broncos football team he's got some size to him let's talk about Drew Himmelman a little bit I like Drew Himmelman and I think the Broncos do as well you know he got the highest guarantee for any undrafted player that they brought in last year and they brought in quite a few so I think that's really notable right now we talk about this offensive line and a lot of people you know they want to see the Broncos draft a tackle as early as possible in this year's draft if not as early as possible, certainly I think most people in Broncos country would say, yes, I want them to draft a developmental tackle. And that's totally a fine position to take. However, at the same time, I would say, I mean, right now the Broncos have potentially five, maybe six tackles. I didn't list Quinn Bailey on here, but he played for the Broncos last season and he's still on the roster. So there's so many tackles that are on the team right now that you just wonder, okay, yes, they could go out and potentially get, if they believe in somebody as a future starter, by all means, draft them. But Drew Himmelman is a guy that I think, Cody, to me, he's got that outstanding size. Like you mentioned, I think he's listed at six foot eight. Some outlets last year were saying he was six foot 10. Either way, he's got great, great length and mobility at the position. There's a clip of him, I believe, I believe it was him scoring a touchdown off a reception in college. So he's an (laughs) athletic guy and certainly somebody that I think is worth, the Broncos, they believe he's worth building around. They kept him around all last season. So I feel like he's a player that's gone under the radar. Again, we can't just anticipate year two progression, but what if he does progress? What if they like the the things that they saw from him all year in practice last year? I can't help but think that Drew Himmelton, uh, Drew Himmelman is going to factor into the Broncos 2022 plans in some way, shape or form. I think those are some good points that you make there, especially with Butch Berry coming in as a fresh set of eyes and Justin Knott with the offensive line experience. You know, these guys have Ben Steele, and we talk about those guys and just a new perspective, how much of that maybe was changed with the departure of, you know, obviously, you know, Mike Munchak, you know, that everyone had like last season. Was this a Mike Munchak type move for Drew Hamelman or is it something that George Payton and the scout side, as you mentioned, a lot of the scouts are, are the same for the most part. There's been a couple of changes in that department, but you know, we'll have to see how everything pans out in the 2022 NFL Draft of Broncos Country. That will wrap up today's episode of Locked On Broncos. Let us know what you thought down in the comment section down below here on YouTube or tweet us on Twitter at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Locked On Broncos. Tomorrow's episode of the show, we're going to focus on some of the defensive players that may have been forgotten a little bit that aren't being talked about as much by fans or by media. You get that much more on tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos.